Hey everyone, welcome to Compline for tonight, October the 15th, 2020. Uh, thanks to, uh, I was just thinking of her name in my head. Thanks to Sarah Raybergen Stassen and to Rebecca Thompson for reminding me that uh, tonight, today is um, a day set aside to remember uh, children who have been stillborn, uh, miscarried, or died early. Uh, and so families have been affected uh, by this particular type of grief. Light candles in memory of these uh, children, no less loved for their short time with their families. Uh, and so I light these candles in memory, especially of Xavier today and uh, our little ones that we never met. It'll sit up here at the top today. Thanks to Tammy for the lovely uh, candle for that. Uh, friends, tonight uh, we read the third chapter of Matthew's Gospel. And uh, in that we'll hear about John the Baptizer's ministry as well as Jesus' own baptism. And so our hymn tonight will be number 453, Baptized and Set Free, uh, written by Kathy Scogan Soldner. Uh, and this is a relatively new hymn. It looks like it was copyrighted about 1999. So yeah, you know you're um, Lutheran when uh, relatively new means 20 years old, so. <laughs> uh, well, let's, before we begin, let's, uh, or as we begin, let's do that as it is good and wise to begin all things under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is uh, a prayer for uh, praying with children during times of grief or difficulty. God in heaven, please listen to all those who are praying to you now. Those who are sad and crying, those who have lost friends and family, those who are alone and frightened. Help them to remember that you are there and that you are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Nana. Uh, given thanks for negative tests, negative COVID tests for Josiah and Solomon and Nana today. Hopefully not letting the cat out of the bag there. So I was talking about that last night that we were waiting on tests. So, And um, kudos and thanks be to God for AHS for turning around tests in like 28 hours. That's phenomenal. Welcome Tammy, welcome Carrie and Curtis. Auntie Carol, blessings to you. Rose and Dave, blessings. Katika, Robin, Heidi, welcome. Thanks for joining in, everybody. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Friends, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, 
my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. A reading from the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming in to baptize, in, Coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan, to John, to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do not come to me. But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest upon him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Number 453, Baptized and Set Free. We are people created and chosen by God, then were washed ever gently in mercy and love. Sin has power no more. Jesus opened the door to a fountain bringing healing and wholeness and more. We are people created, chosen by God, 
then were washed ever gently in mercy and love sin has power no more jesus opened the door to a fountain bringing healing and wholeness and more we are fed and were nourished filled and refreshed then our hunger returns and again we are blessed for whatever the need god is greater indeed endless ocean always deeper than all of our need we are nourished by water all living things and by life that the spirit abundantly brings as we journey toward home may your presence be known precious river ever flowing now carry us home we are nourished by water all living things and by life that the spirit abundantly brings as we journey toward home may your presence be known precious river ever flowing now carry us home we are nourished by water all living things and by life that the spirit abundantly brings as we journey toward home may your presence be known precious river ever flowing now carry us home now with praise and thanksgiving we join the song all are welcome we gather to sing loud and strong not enslaved but set free from now on all will be one in jesus one in water baptized and set free Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, the sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your coming out, your going out and your coming in, from this time forth and forevermore. Listen to Isaiah. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you, says the Lord. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. And a reading from John, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And from 2 Timothy, Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel. The saying is sure, if we have died with Christ, we also will live with him. If we endure, we also will reign with him. And from Hebrews 12, 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And I'll be right back. I just need to plug in here. My battery's running low. Hey, Dan. Thanks for joining in. Blessings to you, Beth. You're always welcome and don't sweat it. Come as you are and when you're able. We sing our responsory hymn. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I command my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Into your hands I command my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Guide us, waking, O Lord and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us, waking, O Lord and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Friends, for what and for whom shall we pray this night? Welcome, Mike. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy.
Almighty God, your Holy Spirit equips the church with a rich variety of gifts. Grant that we may use them to bear witness to Christ in lives that are built on faith, love, and neighborly service. Make us ready to live the gospel and eager to do your will, so that we may share with all your church in the joys of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious and holy God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace, let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe, through you, O Christ. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. And where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, bless the public servants in the government of our various states and provinces, nations, cities, towns, and regions. We pray especially lifting up to you by name our Prime Minister, Justin, our Premiers, John and Jason, Scott and Brian, Doug, Francois, Blaine, Stephen, Dennis, Dwight, Sandy, Caroline, and Joe. We lift up to you our various chief medical officers of health. We pray especially for Dina, We pray for our bishops and church leaders, for Susan and Michael, for Jason and Sid, for Larry and Greg. We lift up to you, Jason, Wayne, Chris, Wanda, Rose, Toby, Noreen, Ron, Carol, Michelle. Lord, may they each do the work to which you have called them in a spirit of wisdom and charity and justice. Help them to use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote our common life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray this night together with Carrie. Uh, Lord, we lift this day to you giving thanks. We entrust our care and our rest to you tonight. We pray with Carrie for a good day tomorrow with enough energy to do the uh, tasks and uh, to be the people that you would have us be tomorrow in each place that you call us to. We pray together with Heidi, praying that her treatment tomorrow will help relieve the pain and headaches that have flared up again. We lift up with Heidi all who are recovering from accidents, receiving various uh, care and treatment. We lift up to you Scotty and Heidi. Sam, Richard, we pray together with Tammy for Annie. Lord, you know what Annie is facing. We pray that you would shield her from pain, release her from the worry and the discouragement that so often comes along with it. Pray that even now that you would be equipping the surgeons and nurses and other care providers that will work with her, uh, stir up their best skills and knowledge and bring the healing that only you can, O oh Lord. Lord, we lift up to you all the staff and patients of the Misericordia Hospital in Edmonton. May your safety, uh, may your protection hover there this and every night. We pray together with Rita and Solomon and Josiah giving thanks for God's healing touch. We give thanks for the disappearance of symptoms and we lift up to you O Lord those uh, frontline medical workers often not mentioned all those who are doing contact tracing and uh, the lab techs uh, working to process samples so efficiently and carefully all the phlebotomists all the uh, various care providers that are doing the swabs and managing lines and bookings. Lord, we pray that everyone working uh, in the mitigation and care and treatment of COVID and in our health system and in our uh, education systems would know how valued they are, how good and holy the work is that they are doing. May they know that uh, their value, whether they work in the laundry or the cafeteria uh, or in the operating suite, their value isn't determined by their paycheck or by uh, the assessment of an accountant or a politician somewhere. Speak to them about their deep worth, O oh Lord, and then allow them to uh, give back others in service of their neighbors out of that sense of overflow and that sense of well-being that comes from knowing who we are in your sight O oh Lord we pray together tonight with Daniel for Tara going through a struggle Lord, we pray that you would sit with her in her health issues. We know too well, Lord, the heartache of broken and messy relationships. Lord, we pray that your peace would abound. Help them to find a, a common path forward, O oh Lord. Wherever people are in strife, Lord, help them to recall the love that united them in the first place move and operate in that love. 
pray tonight with Karen. Giving thanks for our fellow journey uh, sojourners in faith, uh, our relatives in this faith that lifts up one God who has blessed all the world through Abraham. We remember especially tonight our Jewish uh, friends and neighbors and our Muslim friends and neighbors. We pray together with Carrie for her sister to have guidance when it comes to her boyfriend. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are hard to love. We know that often they're the ones who need to be loved the most. Help us to be innocent as doves and wise as serpents when it comes to dealing with people who are prickly or toxic. Help us to operate full of grace, even as we uh, avoid being trapped in negative interactions uh, or conversations or actions that don't uh, bring peace. Pray tonight with Karen for those who are struggling with their mental health right now, especially those considering suicide or grieving for a loved one who has taken their life. Grant us diligence, Lord, to watch and to tend to those close to us and to our neighbors, to watch for those who are straggling, falling behind, uh, falling silent. As this virus pandemic continues, Lord, and is echoed by mental health pandemics and hunger uh, crises, Draw us continually together, Lord. Let us lean on one another as we lean on you. That we might protect and encourage one another. And so join you in your amazing and beautiful work to bless, save, and redeem all of the world. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. And then, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, almighty and merciful God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, Bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Good night, friends. Go in peace to sleep, rest, and root that you might rise to be of good service to your neighbors tomorrow and in right relations with God who loves you so dearly and would thrive you. Stay tuned. If you'd like to join us for another edition of Ill-Advised Bedtime Stories with Pastor Phil, we hear tonight number 26 of the letters from Dear Uncle Screwtape as a uh, Reported by C.S. Lewis. My dear Wormwood, yes, courtship is the time for sowing those seeds which will grow up ten years later into domestic hatred. The enchantment of unsatisfied desire produces results which the humans can be made to mistake for the results of charity. Avail yourself of the ambiguity in the word love. Let them think they have solved by love problems that they have in fact only waived or postponed until the influence under the influence of this enchantment. While it lasts, you have your chance to foment the problems in secret and render them chronic. The grand problem is that of unselfishness. Note once again the admirable work of our philological arm in substituting the negative unselfishness for the enemy's positive charity. Thanks to this, you can, from the very outset, teach a man to surrender benefits, not that others might be happy in having them, but that he might be unselfish in foregoing them. That is a great point gained. Another great help, where the parties concerned are male and female, is the divergence of view about unselfishness which we have built up between the sexes. A woman, a woman means by unselfishness chiefly taking trouble for others. A man means not giving trouble to others. As a result, a woman who is quite far gone in the enemy's service will make a nuisance of herself on a larger scale than any man except those whom our father has dominated completely. And conversely, a man will live long in the enemy's camp before he undertakes as much spontaneous work to please others as a quite ordinary woman may do every day. Thus, while the woman thinks of doing good offices and the man of respecting other people's rights, each sex, without any obvious unreason, can and does regard the other as radically selfish. On top of these confusions, you can now introduce a few more. The erotic enchantment produces a mutual complacence in which each is really pleased to give in to the wishes of the other. They also know that the enemy demands of them a degree of charity which, if attained, will result in similar actions. You must make them establish as a law for their whole married life that degree of mutual self-sacrifice which is at present sprouting naturally out of the enchantment, but which, when the enchantment dies away, they will not have charity enough to enable them to perform. They will not see the trap, since they are under the double blindness of mistaking sexual excitement for charity and thinking that the excitement will last. When, one, when once a sort of official, legal, or nominal unselfishness has been established as a rule, a rule for the keeping of which their emotional resources have died away and their spiritual resources have not yet grown, 
the most delightful results follow. In discussing any joint action, it becomes obligatory that A should argue in favor of B's supposed wishes and against his own, while B does the opposite. It is often impossible to find out either party's real wishes. With luck, they end by doing something that neither wants, while each feels a glow of self-righteousness and harbors a secret claim to preferential treatment for the unselfishness shown and a secret grudge against the other for the ease with which the sacrifice has been accepted. Later on, you can venture on what may be called the generous conflict illusion. This game is best played with more than two players in a family, with grown-up children, for example. Something quite trivial, trivial like having tea in the garden is proposed. One member takes care to make it quite clear, though not in so many words, that he would rather not, but is, of course, prepared to do so out of unselfishness. The others instantly withdraw their proposal, ostensibly through their unselfishness, but really because they don't want to be used as a sort of lay figure on which the first speaker practices petty altruisms. But he is not going to be done out of his debauch of unselfishness either. He insists on doing what the others want. They insist on doing what he wants. Passions are roused. Soon someone is saying, very well then, I won't have any tea at all and a real quarrel ensues with bitter resentment on both sides. You see how it is done? If each side had been frankly contending for its own real wish, they would all have kept within the bounds of reason and courtesy. But just because the contention is reversed, and each side is fighting for the other side's battle, all the bitterness which really flows from thwarted self-righteousness and obstinacy and the accumulated grudges of the last ten years is concealed from them by the nominal or official unselfishness of what they are doing or, at least, held to be excused by it. Each side is, indeed, quite alive to the cheap quality of the adversary's unselfishness and of the false position into which he is trying to force them, but each manages to feel blameless and ill-used itself. No more dishonesty than comes natural to a human. A sensible human once said, if people knew how much, un how much ill feeling unselfishness occasions, it would not be so often recommended from the pulpit. And again, she's the sort of woman who lives for others. You can always tell the others by their hunted expression. All this can be can be begun even in the period of courtship. A little real selfishness on your patient's is often of less value in the long run for securing his soul than the first beginnings of the elaborate and conscious unselfishness, which may blossom into the sort I described. Some degree of mutual falseness, some surprise that the girl does not always know just how selfish he is being, and be struggled with it already. Cherish these things. Above all, don't let the young fools notice them. Notice them. They will be on the road to discovering that love is not enough, that charity is needed and not yet achieved, and that no external law can supply its I wish slum trip it could do something about undermining that young woman's sense of the ridiculous. Your affectionate uncle. Scrutiny. Good night, friends.